All right. Part two, FM radio, or rock and roll radio. Um, again, FM radio, we've got uh, broadcasters who want to take advantage of FM radio. Uh, <clears throat> but they can't duplicate the content straight across from their AM stations. So they have to figure out a way to get content onto the FM stations without spending a lot of money on it. Okay? So what they did was it ended up being called freeform radio. And what that really meant was that they gave, they would hire DJs. And the DJs were relatively free to pick what they wanted. Okay, now this is in contrast to Top 40 Radio, where you had 40 songs and you played so many of them in an hour and it was kind of regimented. For FM Radio, starting out with Freeform, um, the DJs were free to pick the songs. Um, now, the result of this was that um, DJs, instead of playing just the top 40 hits, would play songs that might not be seen by the record companies as that popular, but they were off the same albums, okay? Um, those are called deep cuts, right? So <clears throat> they would play those, or they would play songs from genres that are kind of outside of rock and roll. They might play something from a blues album that they thought the audience would like. And as it turns out, a lot of times the audience did like them. And then that would lead to playing a couple more cuts maybe off another two blues albums. That sort of thing. So you got a more generic... Um, you, you got um, a broader range of music. Um, this also led into a period where uh, instead of selling singles, remember that the guys at the record companies were the ones who would pick out the singles off the album and play them, and those became typically the top 40. Well, you've got now you've got FM DJs picking out singles or picking out cuts from you know deeper cuts and those songs became popular so all of a sudden um, you're not necessarily selling by this selling music by the single anymore by the 45 rpm 8 inch disc now you're starting to sell by the album um, you're, you start encouraging people to buy the whole album, all 12 tracks, all 10 tracks, whatever it is, so that they can listen to these ones that aren't in top 40. Okay. So, uh, freeform radio DJs had primary control of the playlist, what songs were played, uh, more mixing of the genres, albums start to be start to become the primary way to sell music as opposed to singles. Um, now, Freeform had a brief lifespan because <laughs> because broadcasters aren't going to let DJs get away with this for long. Uh, what came next was progressive radio. Um, this lasted... Uh, 60s to the mid 70s. Now, during this time period, um, the radio stations and broadcasters were encouraging people to buy FM radios. In fact, at the time, um, they would have parties. The radio station would come out to some place, some shopping center, and they would give away and or sell conversion kits that would convert your AM radio to FM radio. Okay, so that's one of the things that occurred at the time. Um, let's see, conversion kits, um, 
FM radio became more um, lucrative. Uh, advertisers were willing to pay more for advertising time on FM radio. As a consequence, the station owners and the broadcasters became wanted to get more involved and wanted to regiment the format a little more. So you got progressive, where uh, progressive radio, where DJs still had in, input, but control was starting to shift. Um, so you, you would still get progressive radio. You, you would still get some of the deeper cuts, but um, there were program directors that started to take more control. Um, you had a greater emphasis on straight rock and the exclusion, and here's where this happened, the exclusion of other genres. Okay, So up until this point, which was about the mid-70s, um, you would hear, like the Rolling Stones, but you'd also hear Aretha Franklin on the same station, or Smokey Robinson the Miracles, in addition to the Stones, which is a rock and roll group. Uh, so you'd hear some Motown and you'd hear rock and roll on the same radio station, which is pretty cool. But as program directors took over progressive music, progressive radio, that sort of thing, you started to hear less of that. You could still hear some of the deeper cuts off the rock albums, but it was more regimented. There was more, uh, you, you were still selling music by the album, but there was more emphasis on what's what what Billboard says is most popular music. Okay. Um, ultimately, in the mid seventies, then um, there was something called album oriented rock. All right. Uh, now here we have. The situation where program directors and consultants and money men and people like that um, took a much more active role in what got played on the radio. Uh, there were things called focus tracks. Um, they still featured longer tracks because up until during the days of Top 40, um, the tracks were short. Uh, songs were short, they were two minutes, three minutes max usually. Uh, during the period of progressive radio and freeform, they play eight minute songs. Um, but as time went on and going towards album oriented rock, um, a lot of times they would edit those songs down so that an eight minute track would play, they play five minutes of an eight minute track. They'd get special radio edits of those things. Um, they would play more commercial tracks, stuff that uh, looked like it had a broader appeal. The radio station started paying more attention to the demographics of the radio station. Who's listening? Uh, is it kids from, you know, 12 to 18? Is it 18 to 40? What is it? And then trying to guess what those people would want to listen to and as a result it pruned out a lot of a lot of the other genres that you used to hear that you didn't a lot of music that wasn't rock and roll like the Commodores like Aretha Franklin like you know the Miracles that sort of thing uh, more straight ahead rock and roll um, Gradual exclusion of folk, blues, jazz, all that kind of stuff. More straight ahead rock and roll, more stuff off the top 40, more regimented, more, you know, more of a schedule. Okay. Uh, early, late 70s, early 80s, disco took off as a trend. It was kind of a separate trend. It was kind of parallel to all this. There were stations that converted over to straight disco. There were people that hated disco, people who loved disco, 
whatever, but it was its own trend. Um, it, it didn't really have that much to do with mainstream radio, per se. Um, in the early to mid-80s, there was a big fragmentation of uh, not only rock music, but rock music formats, uh, radio music, radio formats. Uh, you started to get album, uh, adult album alternative. It was softer music, no heavy metal. Uh, you started to get, uh, as far as genres of music, you started to get punk, new wave, uh, grunge, uh, hip hop, all that. All those things started to emerge during that time period. Uh, for music radio, you also had modern rock and alternative which was new wave, punk, grunge, that sort of thing. You got active rock, which was newer rock acts in the model of like the Beatles or the Stones or the Who, that sort of thing, but just but but it's new music by bands that are like those. Play straight ahead rock and roll. Uh, and then you got classic rock. Classic rock was basically it plays everything, no new acts. We may play music from, uh, we may play new music from older acts, but we're not going to play uh, rock and roll music from new acts. It's just old, it, mainly it's older rock and roll, maybe some live cuts from the Stones, live cuts from, you know, the Beatles. We may play some new music from Elton John, whatever. That sort of thing, but but that's about it. Um, and unfortunately, um, maybe unfortunately for you, not for me, I wasn't a fan of punk music or grunge or hip hop or uh, any of the uh, new wave music, any of that stuff. And along about eighty six or eighty seven, I started listening to classic rock. And didn't listen to anything else. Um, there were a few bands that uh, that I liked after that. A few new bands that I liked after that, and mostly how I picked up on their music was from MTV, um, that sort of thing. Um, I'd see, you know, I'd watch MTV and I'd see a video from, say, Collective Soul, that you know they were a new band, but uh, they had good music. I go. I like that song, and I like that song, and I'd go out and buy their album. But I didn't. I didn't hear them on the radio anymore, because I was listening to classic rock, and these guys wouldn't have showed up on classic rock stations. So, but anyway, that's uh, that's basically it, the history of, from my perspective, a non-expert fan of mainly FM music, FM rock music, from early 60s to about the mid 80s so um, you wouldn't believe how difficult it is to track down all this history so that's why I made this video these two videos because it's hard to find it anywhere else so there you have it I hope it was interesting uh, thanks for watching uh, comment rate and subscribe